Ah, ah, ah. Good girl. Come here, here, here. Here, come here, Sophie. Come here. Come on, here, here, here. Come here, here. Good girl. G'day guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, what day is it today? Tuesday, I think. Tuesday today guys, and we're gonna start working in my pond. Uh, so I appreciate you watching. If you're wondering what this food is for, I've had a stray dog coming to my house every night. And I've just been feeding it guys, a beautiful little red kelpie, um, a red cloud kelpie. It belongs to someone, but obviously they're not chaining it up. I mean. Oops, they're either not, you know, uh, chaining it up at night or letting it inside the house. It's just wandering the town. Unfortunately, if the shy catches it, they'll probably bloody shoot it, especially if it's unregistered, guys. Heartless people. That sure I've done wheel. But, you know, they do try and find the owners, but if they don't find the owner, they'll either try and give it away or otherwise it'll end up getting shot. Same goes with cats. They love to trap people's cats and kill their cats. Anyway, guys, I'm just getting ready. Thanks for joining me. So, I've got a few little things to do before we start going, guys. So, it's going to be a couple of hours busy, busy work. Hi everyone, so I'm just trying to uh, get my house looking nice, getting it organised, my family, etc. A bit of a reunion coming up, I think. Um, but what I've done here, guys, is I've made some homemade signs. Slippery, is that gravel? What you can see there is quite slippery. I don't want people slipping over, especially my old friends. I've got a few old mates who come up and visit me. The last thing I want is for them to be slipping over. I mean, I even slip over sometimes, uh, guys and girls. It's really quite dangerous. So what we're going to do is uh, remove all the masking tape. It's not the best job, but as long as you can understand that it says slippery. So there you go, guys. Just made out of cardboard. I'm not the best sign writer, especially when it comes to writing. Um, I used to do sign writing with a proper decal printer and I used to sell them all on eBay. I made a lot of money making my own uh, sign writing signs, etc. But I'm useless when it comes to uh, my writing, guys. G'day, DJ. Thanks for watching, mate. I wanna, if you ever want to come to Australia one day, DJ, let me know, mate. I want more. My only Margaret's left me a bit of money in inheritance, DJ. I'm willing to pay for an air fee for you to come over one day, DJ, if things work out the way I hope it will. Come over for a holiday, mate. I'll look after you for a couple of weeks. But anyway, you ever think about it. Get away from the shit fight what's happening in Europe at the moment. Come to a beautiful, peaceful country, mate. And uh, my beautiful auntie Margaret passed away. I'm sorting out a estate. So, I might have a bit of money coming into my hands one day, DJ. My beautiful old auntie Margaret, she had no kids. Just me and my sister were basically like a little, a second kids. Or, sorry, her own kids. I don't know yet. It's still getting sorted out, guys. But anyway, not that much money, fellas, but enough to pay off a few debts. And look after a few friends. All right, so this is the other one, guys. But I'd love to get you over here one day, DJ. I really love you, mate. Apologize for not watching your videos, DJ. There's certain reasons, mate. I just uh, struggle, struggle. You know what I mean. But anyway, let's take off this, guys. I find it really hard to watch people's videos, fellas. 
So I will take, but I'm going to watch that tree one soon, DJ. And I know you lost your parents, mate. You'll see them again one day, mate, in beautiful heaven. All right, well, let's take this off, guys. So I'll get down here and... Fleet's all worked out okay guys, I'm my expert spray painter. I'm not the best, uh, I haven't got the neatest handwriting. This is just some tin I found at a rubbish dump and I spray painted it with spray tins that I also found at the rubbish dump. And also DJ, who was just talking to you guys, he's an expert graffiti artist. So DJ Puff the Third, you want to put your link in the description, DJ, check your Instagram, all of that. Put in the link, DJ, and share it, mate. And your YouTube channel. He doesn't get many views, guys, but he's a pretty beautiful bloke. Just a real... Tommy Battler in, in London, pretty poor and you know just by himself, just like me guys. But he's got a beautiful Instagram channel. He does graffiti and takes beautiful photos and all that kind of stuff. DJ's been one of my older subscribers. guys it's not going to be the best but as long as you can understand it that's the main thing I just don't want people slipping over Sophie stay there good girl all right we'll do this one See me all right. Let's hope it works, guys. Oh, yeah, kind of. Not the best, fellas. It's not the best. Yeah, you can still you can still read it, guys. Oh well. Like I say, I'm no expert. There's a few good spray painters around my town. I should have asked them. They're always spray painting their old cars. Expert panel beaters and spray painters. A few of my mates. Well, it's better than nothing, guys. That one you can still kind of read it. It's just a temporary thing. When I go to Catanning next, I'll go and get a proper one made up. This one might be a little bit better. So yeah, that one's a little bit better. Just a temporary thing, guys. I'm useless when it comes to handy, like a handyman. Alright. Ok 
first. Now what we're going to do is put them in the... St we're going to um, tie them to some star pickets, guys. It's just a temp, you know. Can you understand? <laughs> oh, well. Better than nothing, fellas. That one's good. I'm happy with that one, but... I'll go and set this up and we'll move the camera. Go. Right, we'll do this and we'll start working on the pond, guys. So I'm just going to put one right here so people can see it stuck in their minds when they walk to make. So we're just going to put it right there. That'll do guys, I'm happy with that. It's kind, of, it's kind of readable. Just so when they're walking they can see it and when they... They'll know that it's super when they come back down the stairs. And we're going to set up the other one. The other one's better. I'm no expert guys, I'm just an amateur. I do good at some things and horrible jobs at other things. This one's a little bit better here. Just so people can see it because 
I'll show you where the really bad is right here. This is a really bad section just here, guys. Right here. Especially when people are walking back down. And usually when most people come and see me, they're walking up this footpath here. So the first thing they're going to see is this little sign here. Alright, so we'll do this one. This is just going to be a temporary one, guys. But soon I'm going to start building a digging a big hole here for a big that big long fence a gate. Soon the whole tree will be covered in beautiful wattle flowers like this. It's not native to this area, I don't think. It's probably from the eastern states in Victoria, possibly. It might be West Australian, but I'm unsure. Probably, uh, yeah, an acacia longifolia with the long leaves. And that little piece sticking up there, guys, what I usually do is grab a, an empty cat tin, a cat tin, and it'll stick on top. Come here, Sophie. That one's better than the other one, guys. Just so I don't get sued. All right. So now what we're gonna do, guys, is start unloading all of this lime soil. And we'll move this gravel. This is gonna be on the very bottom, the original gravel. And we're going to do it like lasagna layers, layers of this lime soil, what I got off Dale yesterday. Over here, Sophie. And right here, layers of this good soil. This is the good stuff, guys. So just like the lasagna layer, basically. And and it's all going to be here guys, we're going to build it all up, all the soil built up. Alright. So I'll just put my drills away and then I'll grab my phone I'll give you another quick tour of uh, a few things that I've found around my yard today. Okay, hold on.
Oh, well, I appreciate you watching, everyone. Seven people's pretty good for most. Anyway, guys, I found this this morning. I reckon it's a uh, western spotted frog burrow, possibly. Can't really see it because of the shade, but it's a beautiful frog hole, I think. A western spotted frog. I'll put the link in the description box. It's already there, guys. It's one of my most favourite frogs. It's a toad. Um, it's really big, a beautiful chocolate coloured frog with uh, creamy yellow type spots all over its body. When we were kids, we always used to dig them up. And the burrow is really about probably half a metre deep in, into the ground. We used to dig down to our elbows or even our shoulders getting them. And you could, as soon as you found them, you could just feel their skin. And then you'd dig around and pull them out. And what happens is when the rains come, the burrows will get flooded. Um, they'll have the tadpoles in the bur burrows, or okay, so all the eggs will be in the burrows. And when the heavy rains come, the bur burrows will be totally flooded out, and all the tadpoles will come to the surface and be washed into flooded areas. So these ones here won't probably survive because uh, you know it's in an awkward position. But I hear them croaking every night at the moment so if you go to the website what I'll put in the link below the West Australian Museum they've got a little sound thing you're clicking and hear what they sound like so and also guys I've got this string here so I've worked out where my uh, where uh, my water mains pipe is when I build this uh, pond so I'll just uh, show you in a minute I'll just grab this string here so I've got a pretty good area um, a pretty wide area where I can build this uh, tadpole and uh, frog habitat with all native grasses and trees you can see the string here so basically where this string is going now is where the copper pipe goes underneath the ground. So it's uh, pretty good, guys. I'll, I'll um. But anyway, this is that sign. It's kind of readable, slippery. And this is just a bit of bit of mint. So, alright, well, we'll get started, guys, and this is going to be the big insert that we're going to turn into a beautiful frog and tadpole habitat. So, I've got it in the sun at the moment because uh, it's kind of uh, buckled, but once that heats up, all I've got to do is press it with my, thing, my, my hands and it will pop back into the beautiful original position. So, it's a pretty big pond, guys, it's all just going to be full of all native tadpoles. Brasses, rocks, it's going to be all camouflaged. You won't even be able to see the black plastic. You might be able to see a little bit on the sides, but all of this is going to be covered in all flat rocks. And it's all going to look like a natural water hole. So it's going to look beautiful, guys. It's going to go right here. Okay. So there's a couple of things I'll quickly show you. I'll show you my retaining wall once more. I've just added a couple of things to it, and then we'll get started. Nothing special guys, but I just moved, found another wagon wheel and uh, so this is what I've done in the last couple of days. I've just about an hour ago I put that nice wagon wheel there, or old machinery wheel. And we still have to complete it, just here. you, it's going to be all covered in rocks up to the white paper bark stump there in the background. So we're getting there guys. I'm pretty happy with what I've done so far. And that sign looks pretty good from here, I can see it. Looks like it's slippery to me. So this is the worst part, just here guys. It's gravel. 
we call this gravel. I know they call gravel different all around the world, but this is what we call our gravel. It comes in all different shapes and sizes, but this is about the average size. It just depends on the area where you can get it from. Sometimes the gravel's all like this size. Other times the gravel's all this size, or other times it's a mixture of all different sizes. But it's just good for driveways and so forth. And uh, Dale gave me this, my farmer mate Dale gave me all this beautiful gravel. So anyway guys, let's get started, it's going to take a couple of hours probably. I won't probably finish, I don't know, we'll just see if we can get as much done as possible. So you're not going to see me doing much guys, because I'm going to be back here, shoveling the soil in here. So we'll do, we'll cover the first couple of layers here and then once we've got the first layer of loam then we'll cover it with a nice layer of this soil and I've also got heaps more of this soil in other rain, <coughs> in other rainwater tanks in my backyard <coughs> and also guys and girls just let you know yesterday I, I potted up all of these beautiful <coughs> sorry all of these Port Jackson fig trees so I repotted them into new bigger pots. And that's my Port Jackson fig tree there. <coughs> Sorry guys, ex-smoker. Um, but yeah, all of these Port Jackson fig trees just started growing out of the pots. I didn't plant the seeds. And they'll live for probably 200 years. So I want to give them away to anyone who wants them. So they're a beautiful tree guys. They, I don't need my air conditioner at all during summer. Uh, but the only thing is you just don't want to plant it too close to the um, to your house, okay? And the yeah The worst thing about it is it just drops thousands and thousands of leaves every year and also Thousands of little tiny figs, but also it's a good thing too because it makes perfect compost most of this uh, Soil here is full of Port Jackson fig tree leaves from com from when I'm raking up all the leaf mulch and so forth but it's a beautiful tree guys similar to the Port Jackson fig I mean similar to the Morden Bay fig tree the same species it's a rubber type tree and it will never fall guys because it's a rubber type tree and the tree branches are very very flexible uh, bendy it's a rubber tree rubisca or something like that it's called the Latin name rubisca something Yep, you know it's a native to uh, the eastern states, Port Jackson, probably New South Wales. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful tree, guys. Like I say, I lived to 100 to 200, possibly even 300 years. So it's just good to have them all potted up in bigger pots now, whereas uh, before they were in little tiny pots like this, really, really struggling because they need a lot of water. But once they're established, oh, you don't need to water them at all. All right. All right, thanks. All right, guys, I'll set up my phone and we'll start get going. All right, and that big kitchen sink there, that's an old concrete sink, guys, probably from the 1920s or 1930s. Uh, that's where they used to wash their clothes in those sinks. I've got memories of being bathed in one of those sinks when I was a little kid, when I was a baby. My auntie would bathe me in a little concrete sink like that. A lot of babies got bathed in those sinks back in the old days, guys. So what I've got to do now is move it, and it weighs probably 150 kilos. So I've got my trolley there, so we're going to try and move it. And then what I'm going to do, I've got the stands. We're going to put it upright in front of that nice log there, we can see laying down in the middle of the screen, and also out another beautiful frog and tadpole habitat out of the old concrete sink. Sorry. So this is it here guys, it just needs a little bit of repair. I need to patch up these little cracks. And I think I've got the right plugs. I've actually got the right proper original brass plugs. But it's got a lot of hairline cracks but it'll be easy fixed. Yep, 
Yep, yeah, probably a hundred years old this one would be. Still got the uh the maker's mark, Jinder Lee or or Tyndale model, Hay Street Perth. So it was made in Perth, Western Australia. A Tyndale T I N D A L A Tyndale Modeler M O D E L L R Hay Street Perth. I've got about three of these other sinks, not the same brand, but in my backyard. They're beautiful for uh, uh, to make into frog and tadpole ponds, and also for restoring old houses as well, as well to have original concrete sinks. And the stands are just here. Is the original? They're not the original stands, but very similar box here guys is an old Fascigal box a red a brushed off Fascigal box that I need to put up somewhere not in my yard but in the bush tiny marsupial they can enter through that hole there and they'll nest in boxes like this last time I put up a box like this guy some bastard I did a video on it I went back the next day and some bastard buddy took the box always people watching me guys I love to sabotage things I do. Always being watched, guys. Certain people in this town don't like me. Such a beautiful life. Alright, guys and girls. Well, let's get started. Eh? It's going to take probably uh, un until my camera battery runs out, and probably about an another hour and a half. All right, we probably won't even get it all done, but we'll try. So, about three ton of soil sitting in the back of that trailer. Sophie, good girl. Always worried about Sophie, guys. Look what happened to my beautiful last three dogs. Georgie, Banjo, and uh, Cindy. What do you reckon happened to them, guys? Some bastard poisoned them.
all you're going to see, guys, is me wheelbarrowing. If you get off on that kind of stuff, guys, enjoy the video. That's all I'm going to be doing at the moment is just wheelbarrowing loads of soil. So it's going to take about an hour and a half. What I'm going to do guys is just do a nice layer of this loam soil and then we'll rake it out and then we'll put a nice layer of the good soil, the nice healthy soil and put it on top just like lasagna layering. But this is beautiful soil guys, it's full of earthworms and uh, you'll never see this type of soil on uh, farmers land, farmers properties who spray chemicals because the chemicals and the herbicides will destroy literally everything. I'm not putting blame towards the farmers, but I'm just giving you an example. All of this came from an organic farm, no chemicals or nothing whatsoever. And it's all full of beautiful earthworms and microbes. Whereas everywhere else, guys, the farmers who use chemicals and pesticides and so forth, you'll never find earthworms in the soil. So it's just beautiful soil. And once again, I'm not bagging out the farmers, guys. Because a lot of these farmers have no choice, guys. They're signed into contracts with Monsanto and all the other big agricultural uh, companies. And once they're signed in or locked into these contracts, there's basically no way they can leave. So. We're going to shape it nice, fellas. It's going to be all nice and shaped. It's going to look like a professional landscaping shop, guys.
Let's strike a bit out, guys. I actually think I'm going to need another trailer load of this uh, lime. I don't think I'm going to have enough, guys. Uh, Dale will give it to me. some of this other soil in now guys. So guys I'm going to, going to give you a very a perfect example of why you should be very very careful when you pick up shredded paper, this is my own fault guys look at that that shredded paper what I picked up from the uh, rubbish dump and it's all a plastic shredded plastic it's heartbreaking guys so I'd never even uh, when I did unload it I did notice it and I took as much out as I could it was basically too late once I'd empty those bags garbage bags full of shredded paper then all of a sudden I saw this plastic shredded plastic in it so just be careful of uh, picking up shredded paper guys uh, make sure you, there's no shredded plastic in it so I'll have to I'll grab a bucket and we'll put this in a bucket or something
There's not that much guys, it's just basically one clump, but I'll go and grab a bucket. This was the good stuff. So all of this is our soil with uh, the port checks and fig tree leaves, bits of twigs, and uh, other stuff. It all breaks down. It's amazing how it breaks down and just kind of like turns into soil, even into sand. It's amazing how Mother Nature works, guys. So I'm going to build it up, the soil, I'm building it up guys, it's going to be absolutely perfect for burrowing frogs. So the frogs are going to absolutely love this when it's all finished. It's probably about six to eight different species of frogs guys in Dumbleyong. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the first one. What, there's no single video on YouTube about it. I need to get, get my act together and get out there and get a video of it. I've only ever seen one and it's been dead. It's, it's pretty rare. It's called the turtle frog. A really ugly looking frog what kind of looks like a turtle. I've only ever found one. It's on my YouTube channel. But there's, as far as I know, there's not one single video of a turtle frog on YouTube. Like a, a live turtle frog. And there's probably hundreds of them out at a place where I know they are. Uh, the only thing is you need for, uh, for the rains to come. It's a bit too late now. They only come out in summer after summer thunderstorms and they're a burrowing frog. Uh, but one day I'll get out there guys after a big thunderstorm during summer and we'll get footage of it. We'll put my head, head torch on. And we might have been burrowed down into a burrow and try and dig one up. So the turtle frog, there's a bleating frog. The western uh, toadlet, or the bleating toadlet, uh, so the bleating toadlet, the western toadlet, the western spotted frog, um, the motorbike frog, um, also the spotted thigh frog. That's not native to this area, but I've actually got them in my yard. It's from the Esperance region, or even down to Broome Hill, about 100 kilometres from here, the spotted thigh frog. It looks very, very similar to the uh, motorbike frog except it's got white spots on its back hind legs. Um, there's a shoemaker frog, the western, uh, oh, what else? There's probably 10, 10 species. There's so many guys. I hear them every night from my house here. I hear them calling out at night. The, sh uh, the trilling frog, the trilling, T-R-I-L-L-I-N-G, the trilling frog. Um, there's quite a few. But yeah, I've got about probably four or five different species in my backyard. Uh, but yeah, no, they're beautiful. The shoemaker frog, I think I said that. Uh, yeah, I just love frogs, guys. I've always loved them ever since I was around, probably six years of age. 
you know, and I'm 52 now and I still catch tadpoles. It's just one of those things when we were kids, guys, being bored. You know, we'd go out bush go catching tadpoles. There was nothing else to do. So we'd go tadpoling and swimming and catching yabbies. Um, and Mum hated it, so I'd always come back covered in my clothes, literally covered in mud, all wet. Heck, head to toe in mud. And some frogs are winter frogs, so some of the frogs I mentioned are winter and uh, they'll hibernate during summer and some are uh, summer frogs and that they'll hibernate during winter. So yeah, it's amazing how it all works guys. So just like lasagna layers and so this is a lime. So that's the lime in my left hand there and that's a uh, good stuff. I mean they're both good soil. This one is what I collected from Dale, that one there yesterday, and that was also full of worms. And this is all the beautiful composted soil full of the port checks and fig tree leaves and uh, other bits and pieces of stuff. And it's all smells beautiful. I can even see a worm right now. Oh no. I'll probably come across a uh, some witchetty grubs too guys. So once I find one of those I'll show you a bush tucker witchetty grub. We actually, uh, they're not the real big witchetty grubs, they're just little witchetty grubs about that that long. We call them bardi grubs, bardi, that's a Nongar term I'd say, bardi, B-A-R-D-I-E, or B-A-R-D-Y, the bardi grub. There are, I think they're a species of moth, a beautiful moth. Uh, yeah, or possibly the uh, dung beetle, possibly. They might even be uh, a dung beetle uh, grub, the black dung beetle. We'll find one. There would be. I oh, usually, when I find them, I'll give them to my magpie nipper. He loves them.
can hear those birds in the background guys just so you know they've got the 28 parrot or the port lincoln parrot uh beautiful uh parrot but they're a pest in this area uh they get shot all the time me and my once again guys childhood memories me and my mate simo and other mates we'd cook them we'd kill them with our air rifles or gings our shanghais pluck them pluck all their feathers out gut them and uh, put a little bit of butter inside their stomach area, the gutted area, wrap them in L foil, aluminium foil, and cook them over some hot charcoals. Absolutely beautiful, guys. Same with the pink and grey galah, the cocky, or even the crested pigeons, or other native pigeons, the dove, etc. You know, amazing what you can do, guys. It's all put here for a reason, for food. That's what the Noongar people would do, eat all those parrots for food. And, and also guys, just a good thing about uh, getting a parrot, once they start squawking, you know, you injure a parrot, once they start squawking, then all the other parrots are gonna sit in the tree right in front of you, like at about two or three meters away. And then you can start killing those birds for food as well. So easy. All you gotta do is get one parrot to squawk once it starts squawking in distress, then all the other parrots will come and sit in the tree uh, wondering what's happening. And then you get your Shanghai, your stone, throw a stone at the other parrots or a stick, and uh, you can easily kill them. So just a good bit of bush tucker survival tips for you. That's what we used to do when we were kids. Not anymore, guys, but if the shit hits a fan, yeah, that's just a good way of uh, easily getting food for yourself. Killing parrots and other types of birds. One more, then I'll start doing another layer of uh, the good stuff on top.
So guys, just so you know, I'm not worried about the big lumps of soil because uh, it'll break down eventually. And also it's full of little worms and worm eggs inside these big clumps. You see a little worm there. But yeah, otherwise it's just going to take too long to try and break it down. It'll break down eventually once it all gets wet by the water, the rain. That's a crow or a raven. Oh, I just call them crows, guys. But they're, I think they're just really called ravens. That raven or a crow. They sound beautiful. Where's a crow? Come on, get the crow, get the crow. Come on, look, 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 look. What's that? Where's the crow? Where's the crow? Look, come here. What's that? Sit. Down, 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 down. Where's the crow? Sophie loves and hates crows. And if you can hear machinery in the background, guys, it's a farmer starting to rip up the land to sow his wheat and barley and oats for uh, the winter rains. So another couple of weeks, uh, we hope to get wi the winter rains start, usually around the 25th of April. Um, that's what they hope on Anzac Day, on the Anzac Day long weekend. Anzac Day is a veterans day for veterans. So the farmers like to have their uh, have the rains come no later than Anzac Day, but sometimes it'll arrive a month late. You know, last year they had a bumper season, guys, one of the best on record. And this here, guys and girls, this is sheep's wool. What I find out rubbish dumps as well. So it's also beautiful compost. The worms will love it, but as you can see, it's got plastic in it from the shredded paper. You know, I found a bag of shredded paper and I didn't realise it had plastic in it. I tried to get as much as it, much of it out as I could, but it was impossible. I'm just going to leave it there, guys. It'll break away eventually. I've got most of it out, but anyway, just beautiful sheep wool is perfect for a garden mulch and, and also building up the soil and the worms absolutely love this wool. So it's pure sheep wool, what I find out rubbish dumps. A lot of farmers, oh sorry, a lot of uh, Maori shearers, the shearers from New Zealand, the Maoris, will have their own pet sheep to slaughter for meat, or even people have pet sheep, and they'll get shorn, and they just throw away the beautiful wool. They don't realise that the wool is a perfect for, for mulch, a perfect fertiliser for growing vegetables and so much more. A couple of beautiful raven. A couple of crows in that tree there. See them in the middle of the rain. Two 
I just called them crows, guys, but people, I think their real name is Raven. I've always called them crows ever since I was a kid. Sometimes people tell me, oh, they're not crows, they're ravens. But I just called them crows. And then one of the most intelligent birds in Australia, guys, the, the crow and the raven. They're so intelligent, guys. If you pulled a gun up, you know, they know exactly what a gun or a rifle is, even a stick. I don't know, it might not work. You point a rifle at them like this, guys, and they'll fly off. You know, they learn the very first time a gun's fired at them. If they don't get shot, they'll definitely know the next time that that rifle pointed at them is bad news and they'll fly away. But they're so intelligent, guys, the crows, as they are all over the world, in Europe and so forth. They'll, if you feed them, they'll bring you... Yeah. So if you feed them, they'll bring you gifts, presents. The magpie's the same. Nipper does the same for me. He'll bring me little gifts, twigs or little bits of uh, metal. He'll bring them to my, my doorway, my doorstep. Not very often, but sometimes he does. So we're getting there, guys. I reckon I'm going to need another load of soil, that, that lime soil. But I reckon Dale will give it to me. He's got quite a bit there. We'll see where we go. We're about halfway there with the uh, trailer. So they're always in my tree, guys. They raid the uh, eggs of birds, uh, willy wagtail birds, or dove eggs, and so much more. But they're just part of Mother Nature. And they're off beautiful scavengers. See them on the side of the road eating kangaroos and, you know, what have been hit by cars, sheep in the paddocks, and everything else. And also, guys, if you can hear there any passing traffic in the distance, probably about 300 metres away is the main uh, esperance to uh, Collie uh, Road, the highway, the esperance to Collie Highway. Uh, so esperance is a beautiful coastal town about 500 kilometres from uh, Dumbleyong, and Collie's about probably 150 kilometres from Dumbleyong. I think it's called the Collie Lake King Road, the highway. It's one of the main highways. Highway 120, that one there. That's the main highway Dombiong sits on. I found that sign at a rubbish dump. Yeah, 
hear the trains passing and the trains honking their horns. And I'm pretty lucky where I live, guys. It's nice and quiet. Inside the house, you hardly hear anything. But you, but you do hear the trains coming through. Getting there, so we've got to build it up a lot more high, guys. Maybe twice the size, possibly. So, a lot of crows around today, guys. There's about 10 hovering over my house. Might be an ominous sign, eh? An ominous sign. Oh, okay. This is a bit of a surprise. Look at this, guys. This is what mates do for you. This is what mates do for you, guys. You've got beautiful mates to rely on. Guess what I'm getting, guys? This is one of my best mates in Dumbleyong. A Noongar bloke by the name of Grant. Yep. That looks great. He's got some a bit of a surprise for me guys. I'm paying for it. G'day Grant. Good mate. You're on camera, you don't mind? No, you're right. Yeah. All right. So this is Grant, guys. So Grant's, uh, I uh, take your glasses off, Grant, so we can see you. Mm -hmm. So Grant's one of the um, Noongar men in Dumbuyong, and Grant runs the uh, Woody uh, Aboriginal tours. So if you go to my Facebook, I've just started a Facebook called William Sherman, and it's more or less dedicated to uh, Grant's um, business, Woody tours. It's all Aboriginal related guys, so everything's to do with uh, grants, to business and that and so forth. And uh, like Aboriginal scar trees, Noongar scar trees and bush tucker and I found a beautiful scar tree yesterday, Grant, right next yeah. to where your little um, cars are, mate. Yeah. 
Yeah, in that little bush there. I don't I know. I've you... seen that one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You dropped your glasses, mate. Um, but yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah. There's two yep. on one tree, yep. but one's beautifully shaped. Yep. Yeah, it's like a white gum or something yeah, like I've that. Yeah, I've seen that one. Oh, That's nice. Nice. Yeah. That would have been a little coolerman taken out of there. Oh, nice. So yep. a is for collecting water, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So check out Grant's Woody Tours, W U T I to Aboriginal Tours, guys. I saw one of my mates a couple of days ago. He said he's booked a tour with you. Al from yeah, Wagen. He has, yep. Oh, that's good. So just quickly, Grant, tell me where you do your tours. We go all the significant sites. Yep. Around Dumbleyung, Lake Dumbleyung. Uh, we look at mammals. Yep. Uh, lizard traps. And um, just the way Aboriginal people travelled, you know? Yeah. And... Um, so Grant also do the bush foods. Oh, and nice stuff like that. Yep. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. so Grant's father and mother were pretty well respected Noongar people in Dombiong, guys. Uh, Grant's dad's name was Henry Riley, and his mother's name was Ruby. Henry and Ruby, I remember them when I was kids. They had about sixteen kids. How many kids did your mum have? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm. Oh, right. So big family. Yeah, <laughs> and I've always. Growing up, uh, Grant, but one of his nephew, Nunji, was my best Noongar mate in uh, Dumbuyang. Yep. Nunji, is, is he back inside? I or? think he is, Bill. Yeah, yeah back, back in, in back in jail. I spent most yeah. of his life in jail, guys. Yeah. Just for petty crimes. Yeah. Petty crimes, but, um, but alcohol. I don't think he can cope, you know? Yeah, he alcohol. can't cope in yeah. normal civ yep. civvy street, as we say in the army. Because, see, he, in there, he's got his bed, his yeah. TV, his... Yeah. Um, his friends. Everything, you know. Here, yeah. Out here, it's a battle for him. That's it. Yeah. I've done videos on Nunji, guys. So he's, uh, I'll put the links in the description once the video's finished. But anyway, you want to have a look. Nunji, N-A-R-N-J-I. -I, Nunji. I just say Nunji. He's. So, Nunji? Nunji, yeah. Yeah. But he's. His real name's yeah. Athel. Athel Riley. Athel Riley. Yeah, but that's his grandfather's name, Nanji. Oh, okay. He was an old tribal elder. Nice. Yep. And, um, was that your dad's dad? No, that was on his dad's side. Oh, okay. The Underwood side. Yep. And um, he was a, they used to call him Snowy and Nanji. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, white blonde hair. Yeah. 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 I'll but tell he you. was dark as. Yeah. He, but Nanji sort of, he, I don't know, yep. he must have took after the. Yeah. The European in us. Yeah, so. no, he definitely looks like a normal yeah. bloke. Yeah. I'll tell you a quick story, Grant. I probably told you before, but anyway, me and Nanji were playing here when we were kids and on yeah. a sand pit with mum. Yep. And uh, and mum, we both had our shirts off. We both had white blonde hair, and mum reckons she could never tell the difference. Yep. You know, oh, so we both that, were yeah. brown as anything. Me from sun, <laughs> sunburn. Yeah, yep. And Nanji being Nunga original. Yep. But yeah, but I appreciate this, mate. Yeah, but no, anyway, yeah, guys, yep. check out Grant's. Um, you know, Grant, me and Grant look after each other. Yep. And uh, so, how much? Oh, I'll, I'll fix you up soon, mate. Mm. So, do you want to just reverse it in, or? Yep. Yep. Um, I'll move this concrete sink, mate, and just where that sink is. Right out. Good. You reckon? Okay then. Yeah. All right, guys. So yeah, no. So, uh, Grant's one of my, you know, best Nungar mates in Dumbuyung, and his brother Graham. He's got a few, there used to be a lot of Noongar people living in young guys, but there's not many, so, so many these days. So this is all beautiful mulch for my uh, backyard guys. And Grant does a lot of odd jobs. Yep. I can... Is it a side tipper or a... No, Bill, we've got, got to shovel it off. Okay then, no worries. I'll set up the camera and we'll get going, mate. Oh, well, that's a, that's a rest, guys. So I'm nearly there. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, it's all about good exercise, guys. So we're getting there. I appreciate everyone watching. And I might as well feel myself shoveling this soil, eh? It's all beautiful leaf mulch or tree mulch. 
a tree got blown down in a storm. Oh no, these ones actually got cut down. So Graham's got, uh, I mean Grant's got brothers, Russell, Gr Graham, um, Jimmy, Anthony. Anthony passed away. How was Anthony when he... He was only... About 20, in his mid-20s? He was in his 30s. 30s. Mm. So Anthony passed away from alcohol. Poisoning, yeah. Alcohol poisoning, guys. That's what happens to a lot of Noongar people. They lose hope and they turn to alcohol. Mm. You know, their lives have been destroyed, guys. And that's what's happened to uh, Nunji. Alcohol and drugs and... Yep. But, but Anthony was a beautiful bloke, guys. I'll never forget him. He's a really, really good-looking bloke. I'll go and grab my uh, rake, mate. No, we'll All right, then. I've got a fire rake. Yeah. Hey. Is this enough? Um, oh yeah, maybe. I mean, if you can get another light, I'll, I won't say no. I'll oh, pay yeah. pay for it, mate. Right? Yep. I just want to uh, show my photo, the painting, what Penny did for me, mate. Oh, I yeah. So Grant's also got a sister called Penny, and Nun Nunji's also a beautiful Aboriginal painter too, guys. So I'll quickly just show you this painting while we're talking about Grant's family, guys. So this is what Penny did for me. Penny's probably about four or five years older than me. So this beautiful painting here, what Penny did for me, probably around 12 years ago. A beautiful Noongar painting. And like I say, uh, um, Nanji's really good at painting too. If you enter Nanji, N-A-R-N-J-I, you'll see the painting, what Nanji did as well. I'll put the links in the description once I finish the video, guys. But anyway, we've probably only got about another 20 minutes left of my battery life. So there's Graham, Jimmy, Penny, Nunji, I mean, uh, Anthony, who else? Anthony, Penny and Nunji, they're my nephews. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So I... There's Ina. Oh, that's Corey. right. Ina. Ina, Corey, the yep. Violet. Violet, yeah, she's passed away. I've done and videos there's... on Violet. Then there's Athel. Athel, okay. That's who young Athel's named after. Oh, okay. Nanji. Yep, I don't know. Yeah. And then after Athel, there's Jimmy. Yeah, I know Jimmy. And then after Jimmy, there's Eileen. Oh, yeah, Eileen. I know Eileen. And then there was Julie. Oh, okay. Julie.
Five? Yeah. Yeah, I don't Julie, know Julie. Martha. Okay. Um, Yvonne. Oh, Graham, right. Me, Russell, and six, yep. another sister. I know Raleigh. Russell. Oh, okay. And she died when she was a baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's a big family. Yeah, yep. But Henry, guys, was uh, pretty well respected. My dad used to look after Henry back in the young old days. We've always had a lot of respect for the Noongar people, my family, guys. Yep. Got on well with the old men. Yeah, dad was pretty well respected by the yep. Riley family. And little did I know later, guys, 40 years later, that I found out that my great-great-great-grandfather was a Victorian Aboriginal. Yeah. Taller bar. And look at me, guys, I look like just a normal white fella. And he was a full-blooded a full blooded Victorian Aboriginal warrior, guys. Look at me, you know, blue-green eyes, face full of freckles, a Roman nose, Caucasian lips. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I did a video on Grant's cars the other day in a live video, the Sunset Tour, if you're interested. I'll put the link below when I finish this video where I do a tour of all Grant's cars. Have you had any interest in your cars, Grant? Um, yeah, I had a black come today from Coconut. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's Sorry. interested in the old, um, the old often. Oh, nice. Yeah. So. Okay. So I did do a video the other day on all the odd cars. He could have seen that because he... Oh, okay. He came, yeah, so oh, that nice. was good. Oh, that's good. He made use of it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Well. Question, do you want me to talk to this, mate? No, no. No, no, they, yeah. Mick was saying to get rid of it. Oh, okay, is it? Is there still much there? Yeah, there's still a fair bit there. Oh, okay. I've got another truck load there. Oh, I'll grab it. Yeah. I'll pay for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's probably bit. about two or three thousand acres, probably. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I think we're just waiting for the rain, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 A bit early, I think, at the moment. Is, yeah, yeah. I mean, the farmers are dry seeding. I've seen a few of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Appreciate those lights, mate. You don't have to watch those videos. Hey? You, you, you must get up pretty early. Yeah, I'll just watch the morning news early. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like to get up early. Work, yeah? Yeah. I'll just show you something over here, Grant. Yeah. Hold well, on. Just come over here. Hold on. Yeah. Did you want that forty four gallon drum, mate? Yeah, no, the Coming handy or something. <laughs> yeah. You got any frogs in your pond? Yeah, I hear a couple. I went out and lit them. Oh, nice. I got them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Did any of those tadpoles turn into frogs? I think they did do. Oh, that's good. Well, a fair bit around. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any bobtails around? Uh, not really. No. Yeah. Don't forget if you see them, mate. I'll grab them and... Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll just get one over, mate. Yeah, that's true. Sure that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the dogs killed them, mate. You know yep. dogs kill them? They, they just do not do any harm. You know, they're beautiful creatures. Oh, they are, mate. Yeah. They must have been there a bush tucker, the bob tucker. Yeah, they, the old fellas used to eat the liver out of them. Well, it's a pretty tiny stuff. litter. Yeah. Tiny liver. But that cute, you know, that kept them. It was a uh, thing to, to treat coals and cops yeah. and oh, okay. in the old, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So also, guys, just so you know, we're going to, Grant's going to start up a YouTube channel as well. So we need yep. to get your YouTube yeah. channel yeah. started up. Yep. And that way you can start putting videos into the website. Yeah, yep. So we're going to no, get Grant be. set up with a YouTube channel very soon, guys. Yep. And that'll help promote your business. Because that's yeah. what you need to talk about, yeah. right? Stuff yeah. like that. Right. You know, yeah. the liver for yeah. uh, fixing up colds and food. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Because Grant knows a lot of stuff about the Noongar history. Grant teaches me stuff too. I don't <laughs> It's all about learning, passing yeah, it on, right. isn't it? Yep. So who does all the work on your little bobcat excavator thing? Um, Bernie. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a little bit complicated, I'll get him to come in. Yeah. Yeah, he'll sort it out. 
Where's he working at the moment? He's at the Cogan up uh, Rodeo. Oh, what is he doing there? Uh, does a lot of maintenance. Oh, okay. Yeah, keeps it running. And yep. He's a good, good mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. Does he do auto electrics and stuff? All like that sort of stuff. He can do anything. What are those air cons I gave you? Were they stuffed or? Um. Did you ever look at them? Or? No, I never looked at them. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But he's yeah. pretty good electric. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not, I haven't been no. lately, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's been no uh, witnessing going on because of the COVID. Yeah, COVID. Oh, okay. They're fighting on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's just like... Okay. Yeah. They reckon it's only just like a flu. Oh, that's all it is. A lot of people just... Yeah, it's just a common yeah. cold, basically, yeah. mate. Yeah. The corona is a cold. Well, I never, I never actually got it, yeah. You haven't had the, the needle? I had the needle. Oh, okay. But I, I thought, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just a common cold, mate. Yeah, that's all it is. Yep. You got a 0.8% chance of dying from it. Yeah, yep. So it's just all, it's just the people who are vulnerable, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. Mainly old people, mate. Yeah, yep. And sick. Yep. I've done a job in Wagen yesterday. Oh, that's good. What are yeah. you doing? Uh, I've done a driveway. Oh, no. Nice. With a cracker duck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I noticed that stuff there. Yeah, it was a bit on the. Yeah. How'd they find you? They, yeah, they. I did. mean, how did they find that? Uh, Bernie got me on Oh, them. okay. Yeah. So, uh, cracker so, dice is like blue metal. Yeah, but it, once it goes down and compacted, it's, oh, okay. it's nice. Shit, yeah. that's what I should have got here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. a bit slippery. Yeah, yeah. So I'm putting some in my driveway. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I'm pretty well right, I think. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah. Make a profit out of it? Yeah, I'm, I done really well with that. Part. Yep. How much did you make? <coughs> I made two and a half grand, Bill. You're joking? Yeah. Shit, yeah. that's all right. That's for the eye of the machine and my oh, labour right. too. Well done. Yeah. So that'll pay a few bills. <coughs> See, they're going to give me more work, so. Oh, that's good. Well, yeah. Thing is, too, mate, they pass the, your name around. Yeah. Because you know? yep. it's um, the estimator, you know, they can do so many things. Yeah, it's yeah. expensive to run, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta pay, you know, pay for it, yeah. make a profit, mate. Yeah. Because he went past the shy and they priced him through the roof. Oh, no, they'll. Yeah, and he said, nah, bloody. Yeah, no, they'll be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Off, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
guys we'll sign off now because my battery's just about to go flow appreciate everyone watching